Podcasting for brands. I am the how.com. Sound Art Radio 102.5 FM. www.soundartradio.org.uk. There we go. Uh, five o'clock on the dot. Uh, never miss it. Actually, I do. And I nearly missed it today because I was a bit late. So I had to apologise to Amanda, who's sitting opposite me. So, uh, oh, giving it away. So, uh, Amanda, from The Post, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Dave. Yeah, I do apologise for being late. Not at all, no problem. Can't blame the weather. Just have to blame my um, USB stick, which I bring with me. Uh, could say that now. Bring it with me so that I can take this live broadcast back to my studio and uh, put it out as a podcast uh, so I could say, if you want to get your business on air and also a podcast, uh, give me a shout. Uh, everybody's welcome. So Amanda, uh, tell us, how is life in Kingsbridge today? <laughs> Very wet. Uh, yeah. Extremely wet and extremely windy. Yeah. I, so, I actually live at one of the highest points in Kingsbridge, so it's very windy. So you, uh, how are you... Faring during the ki- 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 Kiara, is that right, Kiara? Storm Kiara, yeah. yeah. Now, I, we've survived. We've certainly not had the problems that other parts of the country have no, had. No. We've really been very lucky, actually. Yeah. And what about Dennis? What do you think about what's going to happen oh. now? <laughs> I just want to know who thinks up the names. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, but you didn't you say that you were going to the Met Office? Did you? I am. Yeah? Yes, yes. I'm going to the Met Office for a tour on the 22nd of February. Yeah. Um, so hopefully I might find out a little bit more. And then there'll be a piece in the next post. Well, there you go. Oh, and I'll give them that away as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Amanda and I, you know, we, we sort of meet on a, on a pretty regular basis at the uh, Start Point Law in Kingsbridge, the business breakfast that they have there at the Regal, which is really well attended. And uh, it's always good to, you know, catch up. But that's where that's where you mentioned that Met Office mm. visit. So you can ask them when you're there who's responsible. I can indeed. Maybe you could even submit your own list. Yes. Let's put our heads together over the next <laughs> breakfast club. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> it's a good idea. It's a competition. So, uh, Amanda, in a, well, I gave it away a little bit at the beginning. But in a nutshell, what is it that you do? I work for South Devon Magazines, which mm-hmm. is a, a local independent publishing company, which produce a number of publications, uh, Dart Hyper Guide. This year, for the first time, they've produced Discover Dartmouth, right. uh, which is just out. And they also produce two regular community magazines, By the Dart and The Post, and that's my particular remit. Okay. Well, that's quite a, um, that's quite a content offering, isn't it? Oh, very much so. Yeah. Yes. So um, a, 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 a smaller publisher, but nonetheless quite a big operation when you think yeah we're really hitting really above our weight particularly in terms of the numbers of readers that we get to and backed up by the website as well you know it's very comprehensive offering a lot of stuff going there so we're gonna we'll 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 talk a lot more about that actually in due course but um at this part of the program it's all about you and it's all about your journey so it's really about um well you can take us back as far as you like but generally speaking it's where you grew up first kind of jobs where you've moved around and And how you ended up in this beautiful part of the world. Well, I am, as you can probably tell from my accent, a true Brummie. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know that. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I was born at Loveday Street Maternity (laughs) Hospital. So just as the rule glows with Cockneys that they've got to be born in the sound of Bow Bells, you have to be born at Loveday Street Maternity Hospital. It's not there. It hasn't been for a long time. Um, But yes, I was. So true Brummie. Lived in Birmingham uh, for my early part of my life and then moved out to the Warwickshire Worcestershire borders. Uh I was very fortunate in that whilst I would describe myself as a Jill of all trades and mistress of none, Mm -hmm. I've actually had amazing opportunities in my work. And I've really had some fantastic adventures along the way and I've thoroughly enjoyed it all. Well, well, that's good, isn't it? It is fantastic. (laughs) A lot of people... Don't say that, do they? No. no. I mean, one of the most exciting probably was when I was working for a very well-renowned interior decorator. Uh-huh. And I used to handle all the logistics for the turnkey projects and the overseas projects. Um, you know, how much better does it get than working in Sunshine Cut for R for four years? Right. I mean, it's just wonderful. Yeah. Credible locations, people spending eye-watering sums of money on their properties. Right. Um, Sanjan, as I say, Geneva, pick any tax haven you want to think of. And I had a whale of a time for a number of years. So were you living in those 
at those no, we were we were going and actually doing all of the interior decorating. Oh, a lot of them involve sort of refurbishment, rebuilding, remodeling, restructuring, sourcing furniture from all around the world, yeah. lighting, um, all the soft furnishings. Wow. Literally a turnkey project. The clients would arrive, put the key in the front door and open the front door. Although in reality, we were probably standing there with the housekeeper that we'd employed sure. and, and the meal on the table. Gosh, it's a little bit like that in Solcombe, isn't it? In yes. a way. I yes. mean, there's big, big properties there. Oh, yes. I can think of one on Cliff Road at the moment. Which yes. Is the talk of the town mm -hmm. due to the owner being a well-known fund manager <laughs> whose fund hasn't performed very well recently. No. Nope. Uh, but that kind of thing. Yes. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, huge, I wouldn't say they're, they're kind of civil engineering projects. Yes. Big interior design. Yes. No sort of hold barred on the budget. None um, whatsoever. Um, but everything's got to be... Yes. Tip top perfect. Absolutely. But you start working on a project and it can be three, four years before you hand the property over. Yeah. Um, because to the client, it's not their only property. No. They've probably got four or five around the world. Yeah. And we, for some clients, we literally would do one property and then as soon as that was finished, move on to the next. Great. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy world. It's a, it's a frightening world when you think of the amounts of money that are being spent. Because I've seen, I've seen properties in Salcombe that have been under kind of construction, if you like, for you know, best part of two years or more, they're sold, they lie empty for a month, and then they're kind of gutted, and the whole process starts again, because mm -hmm. whoever's bought it doesn't really like what's been done, and they want to put their own mark on it, so yeah. off they go. I think yes. it's all a bit of a tax dodge, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Ours certainly weren't, in that we, you know, we were dealing with real people, yeah. and it was far better when the clients wanted to have some interest in it, that you could actually talk to them about colour schemes, you could show them ideas, get their feedback on it. But there were some clients who literally did not want to know once they'd employed us and handed it over to us until we handed the property back. They weren't the slightest bit interested in the colour schemes, the themes, the furnishings, even down to the staff we were employing for them. And that was actually quite soul-destroying no, at imagine. times. Yeah. But you still had a whale of time. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. But I, I guess also there must be quite high levels of um, anxiety with some people because they can be quite tricky, can't they? Very much so. Although not quite the levels of anxiety that I had when I was working for a law practice. OK, so that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> nicely done. So, uh, so you, you moved from sort of property to law. Yes. <laughs> yes. OK, so um, tell us about that. Well, I worked for a firm that... I c Let's say we took the fake the cases on that other firms wouldn't handle. Right. So we handled quite a lot of niche cases. Um, stock market fraud, anything you want to know about that, I'm your girl. Okay. Because that was really the specialism that I was in for the last 12 years. But that's like, that's sort of deeply forensic kind of yes. stuff. Because yeah. th those are very, very clever people who use all kinds of clever tricks to hide exactly what they're doing from people like you. <laughs> who then have to come along and, and forensically unpick it. Unpick it. Yes. Uh, I loved doing that. Yeah, it was so yeah. different. I had all of the creative elements with interior decorating, but obviously handling the logistics, it was very meticulous as well. I mean, you can't ha send, you know, upholsterers out to the other side of the world. And mind when they've got out there, they've got no tools, they've got no sure. fabric. So, you know, it was meticulous. And so, to a degree, it was the same skills that I was using, yeah, okay. uh, working, doing stock market fraud. Well, not doing stock doing. market fraud. Now, I have to keep remembering not yes. to say that. Yeah. Undoing, undoing. Uh, yes, undoing it. Gosh. So, uh, I imagine, so that you, you said that was, uh, at times, quite, quite stressful, I imagine. Yes. Yeah. Um, an average working week for me would have been 90 hours. Right. When it got to about 120, it was a bit silly. Was that in London? No, it was actually based in the Midlands, but most of the time I would be up in London, certainly probably two or three days a week. Okay. Gosh. So how did you extricate yourself from that? By moving down to Devon. Okay. So what's the connection then? Did you... Right. My son and I used to come down on holidays. Mm -hmm. um, my parents and my son used to come down for a month in August and take a house above Blackpool Sands. Right. I used to commute backwards and forwards. He and I used to come down regularly. I always had a boat down here. Mm -hmm. um, and we'd come down for every opportunity that we had. My son had kept saying, you know, can't we move, can't we move? And I, my answer was always, no, you're at a good school. You're doing well. I'm not going to interrupt your education. Two events coincided. I had a major health scare. Right. 
and my son's school, which was a you know, prep and then senior school, whilst the school was self-financing, the land and the buildings it occupied were owned by a family privately. They went bankrupt. Right. And the receiver called everything in. Okay. So as my son quite sensibly said, let's move to Devon. Let's do it. And we did, and we've never regretted it. No, no, I'm sure. I mean, there's a, there's a, obviously a lot of people have moved, people move around. That's great. Um, but there's, there's a, there's a common, well, not a common, but a, a recurring theme with uh, people where they fall in love with the place during their holiday and, and so on. So, yes. um, gosh, that's great. So then, uh, but what about the work with the, with, the, with, the, with the press, you know, the newspapers? I mean, how did that happen? Well, initially when I moved down here, I got involved with the Tourist Information Centre and I became right. the manager of that in Kingsbridge. So that meant that I got to know the area yeah. even better than I had before. I mean, obviously, I knew the area quite well from having come down for several years. Um, and I just love the area. I am, I am very conscious that I absolutely did not want to be that incomer who moved into the old rectory and then complained about the church bells on a Sunday morning. That yeah, was no, not quite. me. No, no. <laughs> um, but I, I, my son, my parents, who eventually came down about 18 months later, we were all really welcomed into the community. Yeah. And I wanted to give something back, but sensitively. Mm -hmm. I don't want to change it because I like it the way it is. Yeah. But I would like to see how I can help and contribute. So... Through being the manager of the information centre, I got involved in a number of other organisations. I became a town councillor, um, secretary of the Royal British Legion, a lion, you know, various things that I got involved with. And I'm still involved with a number of community matters now. And I just really felt that I got to know the area yeah. extremely well and know who makes what tick, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. most yeah. important in an yeah, area absolutely. like that. So I did a couple of stints at the newspapers. Right. Uh, which still just sort of piqued my interest to know more about the area. Um, and really, the post is just my dream job. Yeah. Because I bring a wealth of knowledge to it, and the post enables me to disseminate that knowledge yep. through, the, through the issues. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? That's quite a, that's quite a story, isn't it? From, yes. uh, you know, from high-end... Um, interior and, and project, you know, building design, um, stock market um, fraud, uh, and then down to, to Devon working in, uh, well, the, 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 in the tourist industry at first. And then, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's amazing. So, uh, and, um, well, we'll talk, about, we'll talk about what the plans are for the post, uh, again, in due course. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about that. Um, just before we do, I'm just going to put a little thank you out to some of the people that we've had on the program uh, a couple of weeks ago we had Hal Hal's based in uh, Totnes he runs Canoe Adventures don't know whether you know about that but yes. he's fantastic so yep. you know he I can't remember what his strap line is something like big boats big river big fun you know kind of just says it all really doesn't it um, we've got Christine uh, had Christine in from Watermill Cottages she's in this sort of secret valley. Do you know where? I know Christine yeah. okay. very well indeed we both belong to the same well, writing group okay well there you go and um and then we had Selena at Asher Marks, and Selena's based in Exeter, and she's very interesting. She's a, a lawyer. Uh, well, she's a solicitor, I should say. She's a, a criminal lawyer, I think, trained. Um, but she focuses very much on uh, trusts and trust mm -hmm. funds, as well as wills. But she's kind of breaking down this uh, misunderstanding that trust funds are only for people who are extremely wealthy. Mm -hmm. They're actually a way for people to protect their property and the value of their estate, almost regardless of how much that estate is worth. Yes. So she's uh, very interesting. Uh, so as I said at the beginning of the program, Sound Art Radio uh, programs uh, every week or so. And if you'd like to come on, please just give me a shout. So let's, uh, let's drill down then, Amanda, into the, the post and uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, what the post is, what it does, why it's different and why you enjoy working there so much. OK. It's what it says on the on the label. It's a community magazine. Yep. But it has a very strong ethos in that it's there to support the community, local groups, organisations, charities, good causes. People want to read about local faces, local names, local events and local places. That's what they enjoy reading about. Absolutely, yeah. And as I said to you, you know, when we were walking down to the studio, it has to be completely honest because it is 
about the community and it's distributed within the community. Yep. We can't be anything but scrupulously honest in everything that we put in our issues. Even down to the, my own personal journey of trying to get fit, there's a column in each issue from <laughs> fat to fit. Now, I cannot possibly put in there, oh, I've lost three stone this time. Right. Because I'll walk up 4th Street and everybody's going to me, no, she hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> she still looks the same as she did last week. <laughs> so, you know, we, we can't get away with anything and we wouldn't want want to get away with anything yep. what does it do well it comes out at six issues a year every other month right it's distributed hand delivered through people's letterboxes right and it's wonderful to get so many people say oh i so look forward to it i wait for that thud through the letterbox because yeah. there's so much inside to read it's so good and it's wonderful to work for a publication that's so popular yeah no that's really interesting isn't it so that that um sort of personal uh, delivery. I mean, that, that's that's quite. Is that unusual? Or yes, is... it's unique. Okay. We are the only publication right. that is delivered in that way. But that's very important because it kind of removing barriers for any kind of offer is really important. So if you're basically, you know, you're not asking people to go anywhere to buy something. Nope. You're basically saying all you got to do is have a letterbox. <laughs> yes. That's it, really. Literally. Yeah. And we're determined to keep it free at the point of delivery. Right. Um, I mean, obviously, our own printing costs go up, our own distribution costs go up, paper costs go up, but we are determined that we will keep the magazine free mm. at the point of delivery. Okay. So, what kind of um, what are the, what are the kind of headings within that that you work to? What are the the uh, the areas that are in that magazine? Okay, we have regular contributors. Um, there's always a restaurant review in there, at least one restaurant review, which right. I do, and yeah. that's a perk that I don't give up to anyone. No, quite um, good, good for you. My yeah. fact to fit feature. We have. Kingsbridge Cookworthy Museum always write history pages for us. Those are fascinating. The Kingsbridge Dementia Friendly Group, who I know have been on, on this yeah. program, yeah. Um, they have a wonderful column in there, which is really useful and informative. Uh, Harbour House, The Flavour, all of the what's on listings are in there. Right. Um, so everybody keeps it on the coffee table for at least the two life, two month yeah. currency of its life yeah. because they need to refer to the listings. Uh, we have the Kingsbridge Chamber of Commerce go in there. There's lots of legal advice. There's all things about local events that are happening from Kingsbridge Show to Kingsbridge Fair Week. Uh, we try and cover as much of the area as possible. We feature local businesses, yep. um, particularly sort of this area. You've got very long standing businesses, perhaps fifth generation family businesses. There are incredible stories behind them. Yeah. We've got groundbreaking world-recognized innovators and entrepreneurs, they have amazing stories to tell. Yeah. Um, we are never struggling for content. Absolutely. That's one thing that we never are short of. No, that's amazing, isn't it? Because it's a very, you know, the narrative, the big narrative out there is, you know, local media or and hard copy particularly is, is suffering and everything is, you know, everybody wants everything online. But do you, do you subscribe to that? Or do you no. see that narrative changing somewhat? Well... To be honest, we could print more copies than we do. I mean, we yeah. put 6,500 copies of the post out as it is, yeah. but we could print more copies than that. But you reach that sort of tipping point where you couldn't carry on producing it for free sure. um, because your costs yeah. you know, increase exponentially. But we have no problem. I mean, our website gets about 300,000 plus hits a year. Right. Um, the 6,500 copies we put out regularly generate 30,000 adult readers. And people are asking me, "When's that? Is it coming out?" When, when, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, they're yeah. waiting no, for it because I think the, you know the, because it is a digital offer as well, which is you yes. know, useful. But um, yeah, I don't know. My my sort of experience and, and sort of personal view is that you know it's all very well uh, having access to hundreds, if not thousands, of publications online, and it's all very well having a, a clever algorithm that sort of searches and finds content for you but is that kind of there is that sort of element of content overload and with that overload comes an awful lot of content that isn't that relevant and I think that people they like that sort of curated well-written trusted local relevant source delivered to them because actually they don't have to waste time wading through stuff which might not really, because people are, you know, they're short of time. So, yes. you know, to have a magazine that you can pick up just seems, I just think that narrative, 
I just think it's, you know, there's a there's room for all of these things, but I don't think one is at the expense of, of the other. No, but and I can't see, our, in all honesty, I can't see our popularity waning because people say they actually like to physically sit down with yeah, something yeah. in their hand. Yeah, quite. Our articles are, you can read one over a cup of coffee in the morning, you can read another over a cup of tea in the afternoon. We're not woman's own, so we, we have a hugely diverse yeah, audience yeah, yeah, yeah. of readers. So there's lots of articles in there that are interesting to men, and we have a huge number of male readers. Yeah, you know, sure. We are definitely not just a, a woman's magazine. I yeah. mean, we've had you know, restoration of a, a steam launch, classic cars. Yeah, yeah. The next issue coming out on Friday of this week, we've got the vintage tractor run, the charity tractor run. So that's a fascinating yeah, 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 read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, the, there's so much in there to interest people. And of people, all ages or of all types. So uh, does every household get that? Or if people are not getting it, how do they... Right. How, how we they cannot possibly deliver to every household in every village. Right. So we concentrate on the sort of, if you like, the more urban centres. Okay. And we literally do door to door. Yep. But we have huge numbers of bolt drops. Okay. So local post offices, petrol stations, pubs, right. um, you know, village shops, village halls. There's all sorts of places where we drop them. People know where they are. They yeah, just yeah, yeah. pop in. Every time they go yeah. into the village shop, they see whether it's there and pick a copy up. That's great. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I, you know, I uh, concur, as they say. Um, so I mentioned um, that Christine had been on the program. Mm -hmm. But actually, uh, Christine and Anne are coming on the uh, program in a, in a week or two. Right. And um, Rainbow, is that? Yeah, and Rainbow, yep. that's right. Yep. So uh, they will be talking about the writing workshops that they... Uh, yes. Run. Uh, we've got. Uh, you'll you'll know another Amanda at Less Plastic. Do you oh know yes. Yeah? Yes. So she's met, doing amazing work. Yeah, she's incredible. Absolutely incredible. So I met Amanda a while ago. She's been incredibly busy. I met her last year again, and um, yeah, we're kind of uh, talking about her business and and what she's doing. Um, very interesting story. And then we've got a local Totnes based business called Rerooted. Now yes. Yeah. You know yes. About them? Yeah. So they're basically. Well, like, like the post, delivery of milk, uh, glass bottles to your door, uh, but it's non-dairy milk. So mm -hmm. it's almond milk. And uh, eventually or soon they'll be rolling out um, all, all other kinds of non-dairy milk, things like oat milk and so on, made um, in, in Totnes or their plant is uh, on the industrial estate. So, you know, there's an example mm. of, you know, it's, it, 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 and, you know, we're not in a unique area, but there's lots going on. Uh, lots of innovation and uh, it's, I think it's really interesting so um, yeah uh, maybe I should say it again if you want to get your business on the program uh, just drop me a line and we'll book you in I've got probably booked up until you know I don't know June May, May June July something like that but very flexible so uh, well you've already told me why you do what you do but I mean it's, it's just the sheer enjoyment isn't it yes yeah yes that's that's I mean that, and so you're going to just carry on doing this and well yeah yeah i mean professionally obviously i would like to grow the post okay. yeah um at the end of the day we have to have advertising revenue because otherwise we couldn't produce the magazine yeah i was going to ask you about that so yes. that's that, that's the model that's, that's the model it's advertising revenue but it's a a very very high level of editorial content right and that means that the advertising actually has more impact i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. apart from the fact that we know we are reaching more readers than other local publications you know it stands to reason if you're printing two to three times the number of copies that they are yeah. who's going to have the most readers do the maths it's yeah, as simple yeah, as that yeah, yeah. we know that we're cheaper yeah. than most of the local publications um, you've got a quality publication that's it looks good. Whatever you run in it looks good. We put a lot of care and attention yeah. into putting it together. Um, we know that readers keep copies not just for the two months on the coffee table. They'll often keep them for up to a year for reference because they only take up a couple of inches on a bookshelf. Sure. So you get lots of views and you get longer reference. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, paper comes out on a Friday, and by Monday, it's, it's in the bin wrapping up a broken glass. That, that's it. And the impact's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, any potential benefit has dissipated yeah. instantly. So I have no compunction about selling to advertisers, about taking space in the magazine, because I know that it works. Yeah, yeah. I, genuinely, I genuinely believe in it. I am... My, my employer, Mark, my editor probably wishes I was, but I'm actually not a natural saleswoman. I could not sell a life belt to a drowning man. Mm. But I I actually have no worries about going out there. <laughs> no, I have no worries about going out there and saying to somebody, you really need to be 
advertising yeah, yeah. your business in the post because I know it works. Well, I've always, I've always, you know, my background has been in planning for, you know, marketing and, and sales uh, strategies. And, uh, you know, the, the bottom line with that is that sale, making a sale of a service or a product, it's all about making somebody's life easier at the other end. And if you are genuinely making your customer's life easier, then selling is not a problem. If you're trying to put a sort of round peg into a square hole or whatever, then just forget about it. Because a sale, a sale shouldn't be hard. It just it, by it just it's just some it's a transaction that benefits everybody. That's mm. all. So uh, sales has got a strange name, really. But I think that's only because people are they've taken it too far, like mm-hmm. they do everything else. Mm-hmm. So uh, and we know that the, you, the the your customers, your viewers, what do you call them, readers? Readers. They're all very happy as well. Yes, they, they like are. Them. I mean, you, you've you sat there at Breakfast Club with me yeah. and you've seen how many people, excuse me, yeah. <coughs> you've seen how many people at Breakfast Club are already in the post and yeah. how many people are queuing up to see me at the end of Breakfast Club to no, go in it. Absolutely. No, absolutely. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, an amazing, uh, I say it's a success story, but it's just, a, you know, it's a, it's a great example of a good product. Mm. And, and it just has that local, uh, you know, we, we were talking before we came on air about Sound Art Radio and uh, there are some similarities in, in that it's a, uh, uh, I wouldn't call it local. I like to call it because local implies parochial, and none of these uh, local businesses are parochial. They are just smaller, hmm. and their values tend to be in a slightly different place than the bottom line. So they're all about serving good content. And in a world where everybody says, you know, we need to be more creative, we need to have better content, you know. Stations like Sound Art Radio, the the Post, etc. You know these, you, they've never stopped. Yeah. Good good content will always find its audience. Yes. If you have to push something, your content's no good. No. That's and it. stories <laughs> find me because yeah. everybody yeah. knows me, and I've been involved in everything. I walk up Kingsbridge Four Street, and somebody will bump into me and go, "Oh, I've just told so and so they've got to get in touch with you, or you you need to get in touch with somebody else because they're doing." Yeah. Stories find me. I don't need to go and look for them. No, absolutely. Because there's so much going on, and I. I don't feel ever guilty about charging somebody a, a business for advertising because I know that if they pay for a page, not only have they got a good deal for themselves, but that will buy a free page for a local charity or sure. a good cause. Or, yep. you know, if a bunch of lads come to us and say, we've had an idea in the pub and we're going to do a fun event to raise money for charity, we do not say, okay, what's your marketing budget? No, no, no. You know, they're about raising funds. Sure. We're not going to say, you need to put an ad in before we'll run something for you. Our answer (laughs) is, right, can you give me some photos? What's going on? Who can I talk to? Where can I get the details from? And if they say, well, actually, we don't, you know, we're not really very good at writing. doesn't matter. We'll write it for them free of charge. Because that's what makes the magazine interesting. Brilliant. You've heard it here. Okay, so uh, you mentioned Mark. Who else is in the team? Who does what? Uh, There's Mark and his wife, Ruth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kim is my counterpart who does the same job as me for By the Dart. Right. Uh, Emma is our wonderful accounts lady, come nature notes writer, come book reviewer, come all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, Kim, I've mentioned. Lisa is our fabulous designer. She does some wonderful work for us. Yeah. And we've got two freelance reporters, okay. one Steph who contributes to By the Dart yeah. and Kate who contributes to the post and right. I also write quite a lot of the editorial too yeah so that's it that's in great. a nutshell Lovely and then team. we've got Dave who does the distribution yeah um it's not a big team no, no, but no, no. it's a very friendly yeah. very productive team it's amazing I, th- I think uh for the for the number of people you describe and the amount of time and the complex uh detail around each and every one of those roles you know that's that's quite an achievement to have that online presence and that hard mm. copy presence in those markets across those areas. I mean, that's, yeah. that's really quite something. I mean, yes, that, but I think you know. the closer you are, if you have a small team, the closer you are to what you're doing, actually the more professional you are about the way you do it because yeah. the more proud you are of what you produce. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And it's about that, per, it's, you know, again, it's that personal caring touch as opposed to that big media algorithm. Yes, it's not splurge. just a templated product you know, exactly. that comes out every month and you know that on page three there's going to be yep. this and on page seven there's going to be that. Yeah. It's not. It's different every time. Page three and page seven. Could be a page seven <laughs> fella and a page three girl. <laughs> so uh, how do people find out more then? Right. They can get in touch with me. Um, 
Do you want my phone number, my email address? Well, or just, uh, had... I mean, networking, I met you at the networking at Kingsbridge, yeah. but what if somebody wants to, if there's a business out there and they want to find out more, probably web addresses maybe? Yes, if they go on to the website, which is the By the Dart website, if right. they just put in By the Dart, the that will come up. Okay. Um, well, by the Dart had been established for so many years and had yep. got such a strong fo- following, yep. there really wasn't any point creating a second website and trying to split the, the yeah. following no, so everything is so on by, by the dark, by the dark uh, and you'll get all of the details that you need yep. um i am always around i work from home so you right. can always get hold of me i'm always at the chamber of commerce yes e- me- evening meetings i'm always at the business breakfast club yep. and quite frankly if you ask anybody how to get hold of me they'll know they'll know <laughs> they, know who, they know who you are yes and then uh, other than work so all this work <laughs> you know work all work and no play makes jack a dull boy oh no is that right? Doesn't it? Well, no, but I'm not all work. No, 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 exactly. No. So that <laughs> I wasn't uh, saying that you were a dull <laughs> boy. Uh, I was uh, uh, purely asking what you do to, uh, uh, you know, to yeah entertain yourself. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm still involved in a lot of community things. Right. Um, I had the privilege to be elected a member of the King's Registry Rotary Club. Right. Uh, one of the first two ladies admitted, myself and Beverly. And I'm chairman of youth services and their press officer. Right. I'm chairman of the Friends of Kingsbridge Library. I'm absolutely passionate about keeping local libraries, not just open, but thriving and delivering. We have the most phenomenal library in Kingsbridge. Maria and her team are incredible, and I will do anything I can to support them. Um, I sit as one of the Dodbrook Feffies. Which oh, yes, is the yes. Paris charity. Yes, yes. And I'm currently helping the trustees of South Ham's area well being to move that initiative forward because there's no doubt about it, social prescribing is going to have to be the way we go forward yeah. to look after the nation's health. It can't be done with a pill on the NHS. Sure. Um, what do I do for pleasure? I enjoy live theatre. Yeah. I cannot tolerate Shakespeare in modern idiom. Okay. I take the view that it was it was perfect prose or verse first time round, why mm-hmm. change it? Um, concerts, live music I love from operas in Verona to Vivaldi in Venice um, the Devon Big Band at Rattery Village Hall this Saturday, I'm going to that uh, good food yeah, and even better wine yeah. which is why I love doing the, the restaurant reviews Okay, yes. um, travel, especially yeah. to Italy yeah, it's I my like spiritual Italy. home I do like it I mean personally I would retire to Italy yeah, great, but great I think I need to lo- win the lottery mm. first mm. Um, books, I have hundreds my son keeps telling me to get rid of some <laughs> and writing right um i've got various works in progress at the moment um two novels of faction so you publish them do you N- no not i haven't yet. not yet they're all in progress okay. i haven't i edit for other people yeah, and get yeah. their books ready for for publication right. but mine are still going on gosh well you've got a lot of things going on yeah it's all gr- i mean which is great but I, and i think the you know, library is interesting I yes. totally agree. I think that, you know, libraries have to, like a lot of organisations, it's all about change and it's all about relevance. They have to remain relevant, but they can remain relevant. Yes. Because Ours is a community yeah, hub. Absolutely. It, is, it does so much. I mean, yeah. just one statistic, which always amazes me, every single day that they are open, there is at least one free activity for right. people to yeah, engage in. Amazing. Yeah, no, good for them. And uh, the writing's interesting. I mean that's uh, so that I guess ties in with the uh, with Christine and yes. Anne. Um, so and publish you know publishing is uh, well I would say about podcasts you know and writing publishing has never been easier but it's always content and, you know you and I know content yeah. is king do we need to say that you know no. there was a time when I was working at the FT where people were saying oh it's going to be technology is more important than content no like, no, no no no. Who wants to sit and read statistics? I mean, that is why we have a firm policy um, at South Devon magazines. We will not publish press releases because that's not what people want to sit and read over a cup of tea. Absolutely. And uh, so what's next for the publications? What are the what are the plan, the projects and the ambitions? Well, Mark Mark is always looking at new things to to take on, uh, new ways to structure. But. We've got a formula that works for the post. We've sure. got a formula that works for By the Dart. We're certainly not going to tinker with those. We may be bringing out some new publications to add on to them. Um, but I'm not going to give too much away no. about okay. those. Yep. Um, you never know who's listening. No, 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 quite. <laughs> but really, grow it, make it grow. The post is a celebration, if you like, of yeah. a way of life 
that has been lost elsewhere. Yeah, okay. And why would we want to change that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Does that tie in with this sort of, you know, my last question really, which is the work that you do, the work of the Post and that sort of local um, or small media, how, do that, how does that, I mean, we've covered it to a degree, but let's, let's just end on that. How does that sort of fit in with the sort of bigger uh, narrative in society? The Post is not going to change the world. Um, but it, we have a society that is fragmented, it's divided and it's dysfunctional in many ways. Um, what we have with The Post is a community magazine which highlights issues which deserve attention. For example, the Kingsbridge Food Bank. Why do we need it? Why is it invaluable to so many people? Sure. We bring individuals and groups together which can help combat loneliness and isolation. In some respects, as I say, we focus on a way of life that's been lost elsewhere. The South Ham's communities are incredibly inclusive. They have really strong links. They have strong networks. And I believe that we play a small part in that. Nice. Well, thanks, Amanda, for coming into the studio today. It's been incredibly interesting. We could have, uh, we could have talked more, but we're not going to. So uh, um, you've been listening to Wavelength on Sound Art Radio 102.5 FM and online. I'm Dave Clark. I am The How. And uh, I've been talking with Amanda from By The Dart. Uh, as I've mentioned, to get your business featured, uh, just search I Am The How. Drop me a line. Uh, you can listen to this uh, broadcast as a podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, and many other podcast uh, syndicators. Please share the content. Please subscribe. Please contact me uh, if you'd like to be on the show. Don't forget, it's your chance uh, not only to tell your story, but also, also very importantly, to support uh, small media. So with that, thanks again, Amanda, and uh, I'll see you all next week. Thank you, Dave. Podcasting for brands. I am the house.